lab 06 is a continuation of lab 05 so we are working inside the folder of lab 05 we will continue the left tasks 3, 4 and 5 Task 3, Connection Tracking and uh, Stateful Firewall. We will use the Netfield module called Contract or Construct uh, Stateful Firewall. So we work inside the folder of Lab 05. Tag three point A explain with the connection tracking. Here we will work inside the loader container. The task is achieved by the contract mechanism inside the kernel. Track uh, connections. Inside the seed loader, to check the connection tracking information on any container, you just run this command. Here we have zero flow entries. So I didn't set up any uh, connection tracking rules. Well, the first uh, experiment, ICMP experiment. Run this command and check the connection uh, tracking information on the loader. Describe your observation. How long is the SMP connection state be kept? Here, let's have a look about its usage. It looks uh, quite complex. You can uh, find it here uh, online with uh, more information or use it uh, manual type man contract. Uh, list contract. We just used get contract, delete contract. And show you once that this could be a 
for the help for and show you when to see what you want we will be able to get the tables contract expect dying and confirmed for tables the parameters okay if we want to get more information type the main contract to find this menu now when we run this one how do we uh, get the connection state we have one uh, terminal window as we did before we can put the pin into the background one nine two one six eight sixty dot file this host is inside the internal network put it in for the background you see pop up so it looks like a with a better use to console window I can you see to stop it but it's not inside the front so we need to bring back first this was the output foreground okay it's brought back kind of see stop or maybe we can suppress the output another way we can suppress the uh, output Okay, now we didn't see any output and run the contract uh, do you do you see we see a track SMP from this source to this destination it looks like this is a reply this uh, load interface to that sub network to the inner sub network so this is a destination source okay this is a pin from the loader to this uh, target source destination this is a reply then we get a reply for SMP, well, just one flow entry helping show. Right. One flow entry helping show. Since it's used to a uh, track connection, only a uh, TCP is connection oriented. UDP, SMP, they are all uh, connectionless. So, how the connection SMP is considered? As we discussed during the lecture, a request and a response is considered as a connection. I keep see the connection because we will keep a penny. So we can see jobs are still running. Can I stop that one? Clear the job and show the connection status flow entry helping show flow, en flow entry helping show it asks us how long is the SMP connection state be kept currently is, is the kept right? we can keep uh, to uh, this may not be a good idea to find how long is kept Then you can uh, run, uh, write a uh, bash script to check when this connection state becomes uh, empty of this contract. 
zero uh, entries it looks like uh, 12 or 6 uh, seconds uh, is how long it keep it keeps SMP connection state it's roughly uh, 5 to 6 uh, seconds in your situation maybe different just based on your own estimation To get a more accurate result, uh, check uh, when it becomes a uh, zero entries. Or let's check is the help or is the usage of this contract, which is provide an uh, option for us to find how long it keep a uh, connection state. Right? Contract so how long keep records or keep a connection state So here someone asked a question. We just uh, test uh, manually and uh, estimate the time manually. So you may uh, check this uh, reference. It based on this uh, time out. We also need to find out uh, the units for these uh, numbers, whether it's seconds or milliseconds. Here are examples of this uh, contract. So you can go through these online examples and tutorials to have a look. Right, that's the first one. The second one, UDP exper experiment. For the UDP experiment, first we need to uh, construct UDP package. We run a UDP server, Metacad UDP server on this uh, host one in the inside network. Then on the host A, the outside host A, to send out the UDP packs, we know the packs will pass through the router so the router can track the UDP. Uh, So we need to open uh, two tabs. Drag, relocate here. In the middle is a router. This uh, host A. So we have host A pass through this router to that inside network host 1. On this host, run a netcat ULP server press enter it's running now no. on this uh, outside holster we 
quick connect to uh, the other server we just run there is a connection less anything we just type anything to send the packets to the uh, to that USB server press enter now here we use this contract to see the status to see the source destination source port number destination port number we see the status we can check how long it kept Okay, it's uh, still roughly uh, six to eight uh, seconds. You can count by yourself. So is the connection less, even though these two programs are still running? Oh, we received a hello. Right, now let's uh, stop it. Can you see stop server? Can you see stop the client? Did the UDP? Uh, experiment now for the TCP experiment again on the inside host a host one we run a netcat TCP server on this uh, client we send out this uh, TCP packet Okay, TCP is a connection only entity. Even if we don't send anything, we should be able to see the connection. We press enter, the connection will be set up by the protocol three way handshaking we discussed in our last chapter. And is it connected? You can check the statement. Here you see. It says established from the source to the destination. We didn't send anything yet, but it is because it is uh, connection oriented. Right now, let's type anything hello, press enter, you on the server, you see the hello is received. Now, if we don't close that TCP connection. You can check how long it uh, will uh, keep the state. May use the uh, counter to count it or write a script to count it. If you write a script, you need to check uh, the record whether it's empty or not. I just keep check the status. We didn't uh, close the TCP connection. Uh, intuitively, I think it will be kept until we close that TCP connection. No? Still see it. One floor entry. The connection will will stop until we stop that to a TCP program. Right, it's still here. This makes sense. Right? So it will be kept as long as. The TCP uh, connection is not as uh, broken. All right, now let's uh, stop this uh, these connections. Can you see here? Can you see? Now we see uh, after the 
connection broke, how long will we still be able to see it? It's still here. Okay, I uh, counted almost uh, 20 seconds, it's still here. And uh, the, tech, the connection is already stopped. We get a time wait. Time wait means the connection are not stopped uh, completely. But I did stop them. Can you see that here? Can you see it stopped? You still see a time wait here. And the connection is still uh, kept. Okay, we see a number is decreasing. Six, two, it looks like a timeout. That becomes zero entries. So you check this number, what this number it has. Thirty-four. So it like the. Like this number, we see it here. Time out close. Here, time out. Time wait. It looks like 120 uh, seconds. So you may go online to check the menu to see the detailed explanation about the uh, timeout parameters. Okay, that's uh, task 3.8. No, task 3.b set up a state for firewall. We use this module, the dash m contract option, to indicate that we are using this uh, contract module in a uh, in, uh, uh, net filter IP cable. Let me create a rule. Like this, you press the lower in the forward chain. This lower allows TCP packets belong to an existing connection to pass through. The connection state is established and related. Action accepted. does not cover these same packets which do not belong to any uh, established uh, connection. And without it, we will not be able to create a connection in the first place. So we only have this one except that. Therefore we need to add a lower to accept incoming SIM package here. With this interface Again, you already know this interface, right? In our last layer, it's zero. It's uh, connect to the outside network. It's one connect to the inside uh, network. Yours may be different. Please uh, check check it. Here, destination port number. Suppose this service. 
here to specify the thin package use this module the state is uh, new which means uh, to find the uh, new connection and accept those packets the default policy to drop everything if a package is not accepted by the two rules above they will be dropped uh, we have three uh, sample rules here now it asks us to rewrite the firewall rules in text 2.c but this time we will add a rule allowing internal hosts to visit any e external server and this was not allowed in text 2.c how do you write the rules use the connection tracking mechanism think about how to do it without using the connection uh, tracking mechanism you may need to uh, double check inside your router to find those uh, interface now we have two interfaces it's a zero check IP address this is uh, in connected to the outside uh, network here this is eth1 to the inside network okay it's still uh, like this yours may be different please uh, double check it now for task 2 those rules we need to rewrite it so you need to check your record or your task 2 then write rules in this uh, border a good idea you may save those rules in a script file here I just type them uh, line by line first we, we need to accept in, in task 2 there are 10 out of services right? so you need to uh, refer to your task 2 First, uh, we will accept those uh, new sync packet. Those new sync packet used to uh, establish the TCP connection. IP tables open the door to the forward chain. Make sure you work inside the router. That P is TCP. We need to specify the interface here. That P is TCP dash I is a zero. The destination to host one from outside uh, host to the inside host one destination is and the port number is 23 okay I miss uh, the dash Sync of sin dash j accept just follow follow this rule the connection here the module contract C 
connection state. Here is city state. Okay, here is a use to accept those uh, TCP connection, the three hand, three way handshake, handshake. Um, secondly, uh, for the inside host, we want to allow it to uh, be able to access the uh, outside host. I describe here. Allow internal host visit any external server. Forward the interface is one protocol TCP again does the same uh, package dash J accept we also need this one to track the status CT state Okay, this one allow internal host to visit any uh, external server. We didn't specify uh, any target right? or any uh, destination IP and destination port. So, which means uh, any uh, external server. Then once this uh, connection is established, so the following TCP packets we need to accept them. Hack tables. So this is uh, the power of this uh, contract module. HP TCP. module contract now for this uh, module CT state we want to accept any uh, following TCP packets belong to, uh, to the established connections Related and established. For all these packs, we accept no matter from which direction right? from inside to outside or from outside to inside, as long as they belong to an established TCP connection, they will be accepted. Any packets other than uh, the doors allowed, we will drop them. Forward dash p tcp dash j job. So any uh, tcp packets not allowed, but the three uh, rules will be dropped.
for other packets, uh, the pin packets, we allow them pass back UDP packets. Set up the default policy. Okay, now let's uh, test this one. Internal host with any external host. You can go from this uh, internal host to telnet to the external host. Before that, you may would like to uh, check the rules we just set. IP tables here are the rules we can set up you can see the contract module Add some flags related, established, and so on. The default policy in this uh, forward accept. The ask to change input output, we didn't touch it. You can also use this uh, contract. To check the uh, status uh, tracker. Okay, now we let that module to track automatically with these rules. First, let's try telnet. From the inside host one to uh, external host A. Uh, it uh, worked as we expect. Mm. And it's uh, following TCP packets are uh, also allowed. So let's uh, exit it. And for the outside host, it can only turn that into a This uh, host one, the inside host one. Uh, it worked. Connect to that uh, host one, but here it waits several, several seconds. See it. Yes, it work as expected. Exit. You can try other servers, other hosts inside the network, the inner network. Six. We have dot six, dot seven, host two and host three. And you see the it's not allowed. Which is. Uh, Enforced by the rule one, right? by this rule, that destination with this telnet service is allowed. Now, for any other service, there should also be a uh, disabled. But for the inner host to outside ho host, any service is allowed. So you can try. TCP server use a uh, netcat. We right? can use netcat to set up uh, TCP server or UDP server as we did before. Let's try TCP server. On this uh, host one, inside host one, 
Then on the outside host, if we try to connect, we want to try to connect to the netcat. Uh, net TCP server. It should be forbidden. How do we know you type, type anything? Hello, we check this set. We receive nothing. Another way you can uh, use uh, one shock to capture th those packets to see where they are stopped. Okay, let's just kind of see and kind of see to stop. So for UDP servers, we can try it by yourself. Here, for example, we run a UDP server on the outside host A. Ninety ninety. Then on the inside host one, we want to access that. Uh, Netcat UDP server. It's outside this one. But I want to connect to this uh, Netcat UDP server run on this uh, host A. Outside host A is uh, in uh, host 1, I want to connect to that outside host A, UDP server. You type hello, you receive the hello. So any uh, service are allowed. Uh, the rule allow internal host to visit any uh, external server. And you see it worked, they received a hello from this uh, inside. Uh, host one. Can you see? Stop it. Can you see? Stop it. So you may use a TCP ser server, UDP server, just free of free. Use what you want. Okay. If we don't use uh, this uh, contract here, we want to do that. Think about how to do it without using the connection tracking mechanism. Here you don't need to actually uh, implement it then. Based on these two sets of rules, compare these two uh, different approaches and explain the advantage and disadvantage of each approach. Intuitively, with the contract, it will work as I expected. The disadvantage of contract is that it consumes more resources right? because it need to keep the connection st status. Without this, the advantage is uh, consume less resource. However, the rules it may not. Uh, strict as the connection status. For example, if we want to allow internal host to visit an external host, that one is, uh, it could be, we, we could get a similar result, but there is one thing here. Those reply TCP or those can those following TCP packets in the connection in this contract method. Those only those TCP packs belong to those new established TCP packs. 
are allowed. Without this uh, connection status, the second set of rules, without that uh, connection tracking mechanism, uh, mechanism that, that will be impossible. Right? It, it should allow any uh, TCP packs to pass uh, the, those, re those uh, reply TCP packs to pass back, which means it's not as strict as the method we used with this uh, connection tracking mechanism, this uh, contract. So this is uh, another advantage, disadvantage comparison between these two methods. How do we uh, implement it? Here we need to uh, get rid of the rules first. We need to add a, a rule to uh, those rules you used in uh, experiment 2. How do we do that? We just uh, get rid of those uh, here, this module. This is the first row, right? We need to get rid of this module. So in this case, again, we accept those uh, same packets. Now, without this uh, con contract for this one, This rule, this third rule, is the power of this contract. Without this contract, we need to allow any uh, TCP packets. Because we, without this connection status, we don't know that the following TCP uh, that are related uh, or, or to related to established uh, connection or not. We don't know. So we need to allow all of them. So you could uh, drag the set of rules uh, like this. Again, we need to uh, f flush all these uh, rules. And uh, set the default policy to be accept. The rules are flushed, you can check it. Touch N, touch N. Okay, by default, they will become uh, accept in this input, forward, and output. Right? The port default policy. So you may uh, need to double check if it's not. You can use a uh, app tables dash p to set up those policy to be accept. Accept. Forward. Here, my chain forward. The default policy is. Uh, you only uh, accept, so you don't need to do anything. And if you check it, uh, accept for this lab, so it should be uh, accept. Now for the rules, we don't have this uh, connection tracking mechanism. How do we do it? App tables. We need to set up the door the panel to the forward chain. The first row we allow only the external host to connect to the internal host one. Right. Destination this is the host one in the inner network. The protocol is TCP. Destination port number is 23, the telnet server. 
the same packet, we accept it. Accept the uh, same packet. We need to block uh, any other TCP packets, those SIM packets from the outside, because we only allow to this uh, telnet ser server, the inside telnet server, on host one. So for any other TCP connections, We don't specify a destination server. The any inside server host the destination IP address any inside host. Here we don't specify it. Protocol is TCP. Any other uh, SIM packet? Any other SIM packets will be dropped. For all other TCP packets, we let them go in and uh, go out or pass through the router. We don't specify interface, which means uh, go back and forth. Protocol TCP. Action accept. The default rule forward default policy for not default rule. Default policy is accept. Now you can check those. Uh, Rules which are the set. You can put this uh, into a script file, a bash script file. So we can see uh, these uh, rules. Now we can test again. From the outside host, you want to tell net dot six. It will not be allowed. Right? Just try. Can you see, only file is allowed. See, file is allowed. Okay, exit. Well, this will work as uh, expected. You can also try the in, uh, host be able to uh, access or external servers uh, based on these rules. So you can try Netcat server uh, or up to you. You can try Telnet server. It work as expected. Exit. Oh, this is a second set of rules. We didn't use the connection tracking me mechanism. Uh, 
now let's uh, flush all these rows for every uh, after you complete each task remember to flush all the rows before you start the next task task 4 limiting network traffic so before that we let's uh, get rid of all these rows Okay, all rules are flushed and uh, policy are accept. That's good. Now, task four limiting network traffic. In addition to blocking packets, we can also limit the number of packets that can uh, pass through the firewall. And this done using the limit method or module, uh, limit uh, module of the IP uh, tables. Yeah, to get how to use it, type this command as we did before for that uh, contract module. IP tables dash m limit. So, any uh, IP tables module you can use this method dash m module, which module show the help. Okay, see the usage of this uh, module again you uh, you uh, suggest to use uh, the main command to find a detailed description here is just a brief uh, description the limit match options dash limit average dash limit burst number here you see the maximum average match rate default is 3 uh, per hour packs per second unless uh, followed by uh, second uh, minutes hour day and so on so if you just specify a number which means uh, if just three it means uh, three packs per second the limit of burst the number to match in a burst which means in a uh, contiguous uh, sequence of packets are called a burst this is quite a direct just run the command run the following command on the router then ping from the inside host 1 to the external host A and describe your observation with and without the second row and then explain with uh, whether the second door is needed or not Here, this is the first door this is the second door any uh, packs from this source they are dropped so with this pin we know we will get a reply from this uh, external host A right? here if we dropped the inner host one will not be able to receive those ping response here not uh, let's run it and uh, see what we we observe and describe them Set the first then pin in the router container. Open the router to the forward chain. Source from the inside host uh, one. Oh, oh, sorry. This source. Here is the outside host A. We'll set up a limit. Ten packs per, per minute. The limit burst. The file packets. Uh, 
Okay, this is the first row. Now let's pin it to see what we get. Let's pin from the inside uh, host one to the external host A. Then my in inside host one, I pin the external host A. This is the host A. Okay, now let's see what we get. Burst, file package, or limited, right? Now, it looks like uh, it keep uh, get the response. Right? This is the response from that host A. It looks like that, that Lua is useless. By default, when we uh, ping, we will get a response just like this. Uh, with only this first Lua, it looks like uh, it's, n it's not work as expected. We keep getting a response. Okay, now let's stop it. Can you see? Stop it. And add the second Lua. So with only the first floor, it looks like uh, there's no effect. Forward dash s. Dash j job, which means for those packets, not only the first floor, they will be dropped by the second row. Without this second row, it looks like uh, those packs finally uh, are passed. That's why we see continuously we get this uh, response. So now let's uh, add this second row to drop those uh, packs that does not match this first row. They will be dropped. Right, now pin again. This time, pay, pay attention. File, now, seven. It looks like stop, right? You can count the uh, time, which means uh, here is a uh, ten packs per minute. What does it mean? It means roughly a six second one packet, right? All right, now let's uh, comment to see what, what whether it is. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Roughly a uh, six seconds. Then the second, uh, the next packet come come back. Roughly a uh, six seconds for each uh, packet. So now it looks like uh, this first row work expected with this second row. Without this second, that uh, it does not work as expected. And now let's uh, stop it. Can you see it? Stop it. Okay, which means this uh, limit take effects after we add the second row. Without the second row, it does not work. Why is that? Is it likely? The reason is those packets does not match this uh, first row. Without this second row, the, somehow they, they went through the uh, router. Because they are not stopped 
for those uh, packs not uh, satisfied in this rule. That's why we keep get those uh, we back just like no limit. Right now, uh, let's go to our task file. Load balancing. Again, we need to clear these rules first. Okay, it's flushed. You can double check. What? No rules. Default policy are all accept. In this task, we will use to uh, use it to load balance three UDP servers running in the internal network. So first, start server on each host. Host was to host three. Use the dash k option indicate that server can retrieve UDP data grams from multiple hosts. So dash k. Please remember this one. And we can use the statistic module of the IP tables to achieve load balancing. So we can type this command to find the help as we know that this is a way how to find the help of any IP table modules. What the module name for by the dash H. Here it asks us to try the two modes, random mode and uh, mode. First try the ends mode. For this uh, ends mode, for every three packets, pick uh, pack zero, change its uh, destination address and a port number to this uh, host one, is pack delay. And the modified packets will continue its uh, journey. Here yeah, every three, we pick path zero, change the destination, IP address, and the port number uh, to this one, to the host uh, one. And uh, please note that those paths that do not match the rule will continue on their journey, just like uh, we did for that. Uh, previous task and they will not be modified or blocked. So with this rule in place, if you send a UDP packet to the loader's 8080 port, you will see that one out of three packets get to this uh, host one. So let's try it. Add more rules to the road containers of all the three in Internal host gets equal number of packets, and uh, provide please provide some explanation for the rules. So let's first just add one rule. Before that, we need to run the servers inside host one, host two, host three. Right, run this. Uh, UDP card UDP server. So I already opened this host one here. Host two, host three, so host two. This is host two, uh, host three. Host one, host two, host three. This is the router, and this is the host A, the external host A. Yeah, this is the host A. Is this one? So please uh, take care.
Now inside the host one, two, three, we are asked to run the net carry UDP server. NC dash L U K eighty eighty. Can copy it. Press enter and run it. Okay, they are all running. Now, in the router, we set up this rule. Ft net. Now this time, this time we use this uh, net table because we want to change the target and destination port of the IP package. The net and network address translation. In this pre-routing chain, so which in every package comes in will be modified. Only the UDP package. Port those are uh, only those UDP packs headed to port number 8080 will match them. Use the module statistic mode and mode every three packets. It will count from 0, 0, 1, 2. So pack 0 dash j dnet destination So we change the pack to destination. So it looks like this router work as a dispatcher, right? It dispatch those packets come to the router's 8080 port number or dispatched to the inner three hosts. Here they are dispatched to the host one, to host one. And this door is uh, set up now on this outside host A. We can run this uh, command to send uh, some UDP packets to the router's 8080 port. Then those packets, UDP packets, will be dispatched to the three holes in the inside network. This uh, is a uh, is a zero IP address, right? Or the router. Eighty eighty. We press enter and I hit Ctrl C. Enter Ctrl C. Now you check the inside. Here we get a hello in this uh, host uh, host one. Host Two, we get nothing. How three, we get nothing. Then we get this uh, hello. This router it uh, dispatched the package. It will be packed to this uh, host one. Now, how how we know it's a uh, picked uh, every three packet picks the first packet. Here, those packs do not match the rule. We are continue on their journey, so it looks like those packs do not match this one. For example, pack one, pack two, right? Those pack one, pack two do not match this rule, and uh, continue on their journey, and uh, they will not be modified or blocked, and uh, they will come to this uh, 
host uh, to the host robot, the inside host robot. Here it says you will see one out of three packs get to this uh, host one. I didn't see it. I guess you see all come to to this uh, host one. Uh, please add more rules to the load container so all the three internal hosts get equal number of packets. Alright, now we need to uh, add two more rules. Here, yeah, if uh, every three pack, the first pack is, is sent to host one, then we left only two. Right? We left only two, so we need to change it to every two. We pick uh, the pick the first one to the to host two and change dispatched to uh, host two. Right? Dot six. Now, we left only one packet, so that the left one packet, we just send to uh, our host three. Every packet must be specified in the ends mode. So here we every Every three, every two, it asks me to still need to specify. So maybe we can now uh, every uh, one. Packet zero, just the left of one. Send to a uh, sorry, the not three. This is seven. Right, the host three is seven. So double check uh, the rules. Now the table is inside that net table. Ht net. Right, you see the, the rules here. In the pre pre routing here in this uh, pre routing chain, the UDP DNet every three, every two, every one, we just choose the first one to send to uh, the in the uh, host. So right, now let's uh, run it to have a look. Right, we send this packet to the router to see whether these packets are distributed equally to the inside host 1, host 2, and host 3. This the router. Can you see? Stop it. I get a hello here. I get nothing here. I get nothing here. So it uh, still didn't work as expected. So we need to find out why it does not work. Here it uh, does not work. There could be a uh, one reason. When we send this uh, pack, they all from the same from the same source, right? From this uh, external same external host, same packet. So this. Uh, this makes sense, it just uh, reach the same source to the same uh, destination. So could we generate different uh, UDP packs from different source to send to the router? So then they will be distributed equally to this uh, host 1, host 2, host 3. In this case, you see the 
it just uh, does not work because we all send from the same host from this uh, host A. So we can use Skippy to send a package, right? To send a package to this router with different uh, source number. Otherwise, it looks like just uh, the package does not distribute to the inside three uh, servers. Or we may uh, use a long text file to have a try. Gonna see. You see, uh, no, we didn't get a uh, two hello. It's a previous two hello. Now we get three hello in this uh, host two. Firstly, we get nothing. Send again. Gonna see. No, the third one we get three hello. And the previous two we didn't uh, get anything. So, here it's just in a single uh, UDP package. Three hello is uh, still in a single UDP package. You can find uh, the maximum dead load for UDP uh, packet is much larger than just three hello. By default, I, th I think it's uh, 1500. The maximum is six five files, uh, three files. You can have a check. UDP packet maximum load. Here you can see the maximum payload. Uh, it's a much much uh, bigger than just three hello. It can contain up to so many uh, bytes. Here we only have how many bytes? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's uh, 17, 17 bytes. So it's in a single packet. So it looks like uh, the first packet distributed uh, to the first one, second packet to the first two, second to the host three. And now let's try, uh, try again to send uh, three packets. That way you use, use escape to send uh, the packets from different source number. We can see it continuously. But here we just do it manually. To make the clear you can hello one, hello two, hello three. Right now by expectation it will send to host one. Gonna see that we get hello one. And uh, here server host two, host three we get nothing. Here is is a router. Now we send uh, hello two. Okay, every time when we run this uh, NC, the source port number is ch chosen randomly. So we, we have a random source uh, port. We can use a uh, Wireshark to have a try. Can you see now in the second one, right? Uh, hello too. So it worked as expected. Whereas that place uh, two hello just send it to uh, to the first one because uh, when I add those two rules, uh, we add the extra two rules. They they just uh, 
didn't take effect right away when I sent this hello. Hello three, can you see? No, send to this uh, server. So it works as expected. Now we want to see if we don't change, uh, don't stop it, then it will all comes from the same uh, source number. Right? Again, you can verify with Wireshark. Now I don't type Ctrl C. I just keep type message with a single uh, NC command, which means in this single NC command, the source port number is identical throughout. Hello, now let's just type uh, high one, high two, high three. Here you see you, the, the first host get all high one, high two, high three. The reason is uh, here even though I send out two packs, UDP packs, but they're in a single connection. There is no connection, uh, it's run a single command. They, they use the same source port number. When I stop it, another uh, random chosen source port number will be chosen. With the same source port number, you see all the messages they are sent to the same host. Right? This uh, makes sense. For example, you talk to somebody, uh, even though you there is a there's a relay, a person relay your message to the target. You don't want the target to be changed. Another one want to uh, talk to the target in inside uh, uh, after the relay. Yeah. It will be uh, dispatched to another one. This is a distribution of balance uh, load balancing. Here you will keep a type high four, high file. You see there's now we just wait uh, several seconds. Now they are distributed to to this uh, host two. I just wait uh, some time, right? which means my assumption from the same source they will be dispatched to the same uh, host. That assumption does not work if I wait several seconds. Right? And here I just wait several, several seconds. Then I type uh, high six. Then you see uh, high six is dispatched to this uh, host three, so it looks like the time, the time between these uh, packets also have have effects on the dispatching. If they are sent out continuously, they are sent to uh, the same host. Another reason could. These uh, packs, they are, or they are packed in the same packet, or after several seconds, actually they are put in different packet. That could be another reason. So to verify it, you may open shock to see whether they are put in the same packet or in different packet. High seven, high eight, high nine. If we type it uh, continuously, after high six, it uh, rotate back to this one, the first one. Right? High seven, high eight, high nine. If I type it uh, continuously, even though there was maybe one second delay, they still all send to this uh, host one. So you may use a uh, wire shock to have a look whether they are put in the uh, same packet or different packet, or because the time between these uh, packs they are short enough, then they will be 
send it to the same host. So you just verify to find the reason or the pattern behind this dispatch by yourself. Use Wireshark. Now use the random method. Use a different mode to achieve the load balance. This time we use this uh, random method. You just select a matching packet with property, uh, probability p. So we replace p with a probability number. Again, we need to uh, flush the door inside this uh, router first, then we set up a new door. Here, uh, pay attention, that a net table as we discussed in lab file. It's not a good idea to flush those uh, rules. Right? You see the docker also use create some rules. So a good idea is just delete those rules we added or restart the router container. Okay, I would like to delete these uh, rules I, I added. How to delete it? First, we need to find the rule number. So, what the parameter name? List number or that number? Or with number? I don't remember. Yeah, go back to this top of the menu. There's way. See what the line numbers. So his name is line numbers. Line numbers. Okay, we want to delete. The three rules in this pre-routing pre-routing chain. How do we delete it? IP tables specify the table net now dash d forward rule number one. You may check the menu to see whether my syntax is right or not. No target, no chain target match uh, by that name. So it looks like my syntax is wrong. Here, go up to see how to delete. Dash D input, so dash D uh, preloading. Here the table, right? use this way. Dash T net. Dash T not forward, that is a pre loading. Forward is not inside the net table loops. Or oh, there is no rules, we can check a look. Post routing, import output, but no forward. So this is a mistake. If there is a forward, it will be deleted. Pre routing. There are three rules, right? Delete two, delete three. Too big. The, uh, when it's deleted, it looks like the number is uh, renumbered. So at the beginning, we have one, two, three. Once uh, one is deleted, only one, two. When another is deleted, only one. So just type one. Now they are all deleted. We can check those rules here in pre loading. The rules are deleted.
Okay, now we can uh, use this one. The random method for load balancing. The random mode. IP tables. Net table. The panel door to the preloading. UDP package destination port number 8080 use the modules statistic this time the mode we choose random probability ok at the beginning we have 3 packet so the probability would be 1 out of 3 0 0.33333 just use uh, first way, just roughly, uh, probability roughly. Denet destination we dispatch one third dispatched to host one. Port number eighty eighty. To test the, uh, there is a typo. Destination. Okay. One third is dispatched, then we only have two. Left two. Then it's two out of one is uh, 0 0.5. And this one is sent to a uh, Dot six Then we still have one packet we want to distribute to a host three dot seven. And this time the probability is one, right? We just have only one. Alright, just three rows. Just three rows. Again, we can check the three rows. Here in the preloading chain. Preloading chain, you see these three rows. First one, one out of three, then one out of two, one out of one is 100%. Right? Okay, the door is set up. We can try from here again. Now this time let's uh, type a new word. Aha. One. Try to send to where, where it is. Okay, in this uh, third one. I just wait several, several seconds. Aha. Two. R2 is still in this uh, third one. So it looks like I need to wait more time. Or well, we just stop it. Can you see? Stop it. And uh, do it every time. Echo. Uh -huh, three. Can you see? Stop it. Aha, uh -huh, one, two, three. One hundred percent to this uh, third one. Aha, uh -huh, four. Can you see? Stop it. So, it's one hundred percent to the third one. This row.
random probability it looks like if we choose 100 percent they will get to the third one so how could we change this for this one we don't need this uh, mode probability we ask those uh, packs once they are left or they do not match the rule 1, rule 2, they will be all sent to uh, the host 3. But here, intuitively, uh, it should work, but it, it didn't, right? It didn't work as expected. They were sent to this uh, host uh, 3. 100%. Why it not choose uh, 1 out of 3? For this first host one, yeah, host didn't see anything. Host two didn't get anything. I have file. We we wait for several seconds. Can you see? Now you see our file went to different. I just wait uh, maybe uh, five or ten seconds. I have file come to this uh, host two. I have file come to host two. Can you, oops, no, can you see? I have six. Can you see? Uh, file uh, six come to uh, this uh, server again this uh, first one still didn't get get any uh, package so this uh, random mode does not work as expected the first one host one receive nothing Seven, can you see? Ah, uh, seven. Now it come to uh, uh, this uh, uh, first one. Now random. What does random mean? Random means uh, when you run uh, long enough, statistically, each uh, host will get one third based on this rule. But maybe for a short time, we didn't notice that pattern. For a short time, the pattern is not obvious. Uh, after we run a long time, we will see the pattern. Each one received one third of those packets. So this is uh, for random, not like this uh, round robin. This round robin here, round robin, it will take one by one. For the random mode, we need uh, more packets or the number of packets need to be big enough to find uh, the pattern. They are distributed or dispatched to these three hosts host, uh, evenly, just statistically uh, evenly. Okay, that's it. We complete all the labs. Let's uh, clean the environment. Can you see stop the server? Can you D exit? Can you see? Can you D? Can you D? Can you D? Control C. Control D. Control D. Here is a router. Because I want to power off, so there's no need to clean those are doors because every time we restart they are initialized quantity 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 okay now we can type dc down Uh, 
Okay, it's uh, the all part of. Right? Here you see the all exited. Ctrl D, Ctrl D. Okay, it's done.